So a really common myth is that in order to be faster than Rubik's Cube, you need to know all of your OLL algorithms, orienting of the last layer. And that's not true at all. It was only after I got through PLL and more efficient F2L algs that I eventually decided to become full OLL. This process took, I think, about eight or nine months. And this video is gonna cover a little bit about that journey and how I progressed through it. I started by finding a complete list of all the OLLs. And this one from CubeSkills is probably the best one out there. It groups them all really, really clearly and often shows alternate algorithms. I printed these four pages out, laminated them, and well, it became my best friend for quite a while. You obviously don't have to learn these in sequence. And I should say now that I'm not going to go through all 57 OLL cases because there are plenty of videos on YouTube that do just that. Instead, I'm going to summarize what helped me as I was learning it, as well as share some thoughts on learning new algorithms in general. Wait, full OLL in one day? So based on the beginner's method and two look OLL, you should already know all of your cross cases. Because full PLL is something that people learn first, it means that you end up pra practicing usually these cross cases a lot. And that's really, really great uh, because, well, they pop up quite often and you want to be very, very fast at them. You may also know some common triggers like, you know, when you see that horizontal bar, you do F sexy F prime or um, fru rough, F-R-U-R-U-F inverted. Um, and the next step for me was to find out which OLLs will be solved just knowing that uh, fru rough and rough uh, was the two ways that I called it. Uh, and it was these two. So this one is solved by front sexy front prime. And this one over here is solved by front inverse sexy F prime. And so just like that, I already knew nine cases out of the 57. Going through the full list of OLLs, I found that there were another four cases that were really, really similar uh, to Fru Rough and Rafa, and they are these four cases right here. So this one over here can be solved with front and not just one sexy, but two sexy moves, RU, R prime, U prime, and front prime. This one is the exact mirror image of that, and so you will just go front prime instead of front, and then two sexies on this side, and that. Those were easy ones to learn and recognize. Uh, this one was just like that original case, but because it's mirrored, so front prime, inverted sexy move on the left, front solves that one. Uh, and this one was a case that's easy to recognize. It's the horizontal bar with two bars on that side, headlights over here, and it's wide front, two sexy moves, front prime. I noticed from many videos that people really, really hated the dot cases because of how long the algorithms often were and how tricky they were to do. So I actually decided I would go there first. And so I decided to teach myself all eight of the dot cases, which was super annoying and difficult. I constantly had to go back and revise because I kept forgetting them. But two things happened as I did that. The first is that I started to notice some common triggers. For example, uh, this case here, R, U, 2. And then it's got this like really characteristic move that's an R prime and then um, uh, a sledgehammer. I'm just gonna undo that. I hope I undid that. <laughs> and, and I call that move the long sledgehammer because instead of just like a normal sledgehammer, you actually, oh, I would regrip and then I would do like R2 prime into the sledgehammer. Um, and I found that that move actually occurred quite um, quite often. Okay, I totally messed that up, so I'm just gonna try that again. So R2 and then long sledgehammer. Whoa, yep, U2, M prime, and then that. And that was something that seemed to pop up quite a few times in the dot cases. Uh, here's an example, another example of that. Uh, U2 long sledgehammer hammer again, and then sledgehammer. And so there were just these repeated things that were popping up. So that was the first thing that helped. And what that did was introduce me to the concept of triggers and remembering OLL algorithms in sort of like smaller groups and patterns and, and in triggers. Another side effect of that is that as I continued learning the other OLLs, I ended up practicing the dot cases a lot more. For example, say that you learn, um, you know, the dot cases in month one and then all the other cases over the next five months. Well, by the time you're done, you would only have been practicing some cases for like maybe one or two months. But the dot cases, you would have been practicing for the entire six months because that's what you started with. And because of that, I actually don't mind dot cases when they pop up in, in, anymore. I actually sort of quite enjoy them because I've been practicing for so long. Having said that, I might still try and control edge orientation uh, for a quicker OLL or COL case, but that's a different story. Around this time, I also discovered online OLL trainers, specifically bestsiteever.ru.oll. It was a lifesaver. I used it so much as so I continued to work my way through the list. Not gonna lie, it was definitely the best site ever. Well, at least when it came to OLL training. 
I think I did squares and L's next on the list. I'm not sure why, maybe just because the squares were there. Um, and I, I remember finding them very, very confusing. There was something about them that, that um, some similarity between them that kept getting me mixed up. And I sort of, um, oh, I remember that. <laughs> and even now, I still get the squares and the L's just mixed up every now and then for some weird reason, but it's okay, you just go back and, and revise. As you can see, I started to make some notes on cases with sort of like recognizable parts inside of them. For example, I noticed that for a couple of the awkward shapes, I have actually no idea why they're called that, but uh, for these two awkward shapes, it actually starts with the soon and then uh, the T-O-L-L, -L, and this one was the anti-soon and the T-O-L-L, -L, and that was a really, really easy but fun thing to, to recognize. So when the headlights are pointing forward to the awkward shape, it is a soon, and then the T-O-O-O, which is just front, sexy, front prime. And when the headlights are pointing backwards, it's an anti-soon. And then same, T-O-O-O, which is also very, very easy. I also noticed that the lightning bolts uh, with two bars on, on, on the sides were really just a wide um, soon or a wide anti-soon. Wide because it starts with a wide um, R or R prime and then ends with um, the, the inverse of that. Um, I've sometimes heard it called like a fat soon or a fat anti-soon, but that's not very nice to cube shame now, is it? These two fishy, fishy shapes <laughs> I found both have had really, really nice ways, ways of remembering them. This one was very, very similar to the Y perm, and this one was, um, I don't know, I just like it. Um, R, U2, and then that long, um, sledge, uh, long sledgehammer thing that I was talking about before. And why did I put this guy? Oh, that's the other T shape. Sorry, didn't really have any other group for me to put into. This is another really easy OLL to learn. Sexy sledgehammer. About halfway through the process, I came across this page, Bad Mephisto's summary of all the OLL cases. And what I really love about them are the comments that he makes on all of them. They were so helpful in helping me sort of just internalize and really understand the cases more. They weren't just like a series of moves anymore, but they were like patterns and sequences that really, really helped. He organizes them here really interestingly. He sort of groups them with triggers in this progressive way. I'm not sure how that would have affected the way that I learned all the cases, but maybe you could give it a go. As I said at the very start, all the top cubers agree that learning full OLL isn't what's gonna primarily increase your speed on the Rubik's Cube. Uh, you wanna get better at look ahead. You wanna get better at uh, more efficient F12 algorithms. So that was definitely my experience too. So slowly but surely, I worked my way through all of the OLL cases, eventually finishing with the eye shapes. I'm not sure why this was the last one, but this one in particular was my very, very last case to learn a 15 move algorithm which I thought I'd never get but strangely it's now one of my favorite cases and I think that just really goes to show that there's nothing that you need to be afraid of I mean I remember these two cases giving me so much grief when I first learned them having to figure out like okay which way should this yellow corner be pointing before I start the algorithm but now I just sort of feel it and and I guess it's a goal with time familiarity will just come and well you'll just feel it you'll know what to do when you see the case Thanks for watching this video. I hope it was helpful for you. Uh, and just like how I ended my PLL video, I'm going to ask my daughter if she has any tips. I don't know how helpful the last ones were, but hey, well, let's just see. Do you know full OLL? No. How many do you think you know out of the 57? Uh, about 45. So someone said they're wondering if they need to learn full OLL uh, to become sub 30. What would you say to that? Um, I would say that is a no. In some cases, two look would even be faster, especially if it's a long case. You don't have to learn all your cases to be quick. I can get some dirty with a full of love. You just need to drill all your algs and get faster. So like in this case, yeah. you can see this bar and you can see this bar. Mm -hmm. When you in when you do this, you can see that it joins onto this. And if this is there, then when you do this, it will be there. Which means when you do this, it, you've got this case. This is called a chameleon, and I think that means the seal will out. But that's not what we're really talking about.